morning and welcome to worship at Chisago Lake Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Taryn Montgomery and I am grateful that you've joined us for worship this day. It is the first Sunday in the season of Christmas. That's right, Christmas is 12 days long, not just one night. And so in our scriptures today, we continue to hear the story unfold of Christ's birth and the events immediately following. Special welcome to those visitors who are joining us for worship. On the screens to come, there'll be a few announcements for you. Again, welcome this day, and may the spirit of Christmas be alive and well in your heart. imagined a savior. We imagined power, one like the world but stronger and on our side. We imagined a king on a white horse wielding a sword. We got a baby in a stable among the livestock. We imagined the work done for us through the destruction of our enemies. We receive a baby who will teach us our calling to seek reconciliation and to love expansively. Praise to God for the unexpected babe in Bethlehem. Praise to the wisdom of love. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we abound in hope. Luke chapter 2, verses 22 and 25 to 38. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, 
Now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and the mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She had never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that time she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to who, to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their hearts of gold, peace on the earth, good will to all from him's all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. For lo, the day seen of old, when with the ever-circling years shall come the time foretold, when peace shall over all the earth, its ancient splendors fling, and all Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 16. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it had been written by the prophet. A new Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come to a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that had been seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child and to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfil what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, 
he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years of old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5 and 9 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Good morning, children. I bet you guys are getting so excited because Christmas is almost here. Today is a fourth Sunday in Advent, which means it's the last Sunday and Christmas is this week. How many of you have put up your Christmas tree? We got our Christmas trees up here at church this past weekend. Do you have white lights? Do you have colored lights? And I bet you put something up on top. What do you put up on top of your tree? I would love to hear it. Yell it super loud. Oh, I heard some people say star, and I heard some people say angel. I put an angel on top of my tree. This is my angel tree topper. Um, It's actually an ornament because it can hang, but it's kind of big for an ornament. So I put it up on my tree. I have an angel. Well, today's story is about a very special angel who came to a very special young woman named Mary. Do you guys remember Mary? Mary is special because she was the mother of Jesus and God chose her. Just an ordinary young woman, he chose to be the mother of Jesus. Well, the angel came to Mary and said, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. If an angel came to you, what do you think you would do? Would you be scared? Well, Mary was frightened, frightened and confused, but the angel said, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God and you will give birth to a son and name him Jesus. Wow, she had found favor with God. And then, and Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let everything happen just as you said. Now God could have chosen anyone in the whole world to give birth 
to his son. I mean, why wouldn't he choose somebody important so his son, a king, could grow up in a palace or somewhere special? But God said no. His son should be like everyone and understand what everyone in the world, not just the fancy kings, understand everyone in the world. So he chose Mary, a young lady living in the town of Nazareth, not probably considered very important in her world, but she was important to God and he chose her. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a more important task? She was tasked with raising Jesus and she said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me, just as you have said. If God asked you to do something, would you say, I am the Lord's servant? What does God ask us to do? Yell loud. Tell me a few things. God is not probably going to come to us as an angel. But God asks us, and if you've been in Sunday school, you might know that God asks us to love others, to be kind. And today, our special candle is love, the fourth candle in Advent. God calls us to love one another, one of the greatest commandments that he gives us. So even though you won't see an angel probably this Christmas, share God's love with others in your family. Maybe try to go a whole day without arguing with your brothers or sisters or parents and share God's love or even just give them a hug out of the blue because you love them. Okay, will you pray with me together? Dear Father, we thank you for this story about how you sent the angel Gabriel to take your message to Mary. We thank you for that you have given us a task of loving one another and sharing the message of Jesus and his love to all the world. And all God's children said, Amen. Have a very Merry Christmas and hopefully we'll see you on Christmas Eve. Welcome to our sermon today. Uh, like a lot of preachers, this time of the year, I'm attempting to take some time off after Christmas. And so I bring to you for the sermon today words from another preacher, a gifted preacher and speaker and author that I turn to a lot. Her name is Barbara Brown Taylor. She's an Episcopal priest. And this comes from her book, Home by Another Way, a collection of sermons. Her sermon is entitled The Same, Home by Another Way. And it comes from this Christmas season, written almost a decade ago, but still very important for where we find ourselves today. Home by Another Way. The story of the Magi ranks right up there with the Christmas and Easter stories in terms of snaring the human imagination. Poets as distinct as William Butler Yeats and William Carlos Williams have wrapped words around the visit of the wise men, Longfellow even gave them names, Melchior, Casper, and Balthazar. Hundreds of artists have painted the scene, including Botticelli and Fra Angelico. Have you ever seen Girondio's Adoration, painted in 1487? In it, the eldest Magus kneels before the Christ child, who coyly lifts his little loincloth to let the old man admire his full humanity. In more recent years, Garrison Keillor has told the story on National Public Radio's Prairie Home Companion, and James Taylor has written a lilting song from which the title of this sermon comes. So much has been made of this story, about which we know so little. They were not kings, of course, and they were not all three of them, at least not according to Matthew. We do not know who they were, where they came from, or how many of them there actually were. We do not know how long it took them to get to Bethlehem, or how old Jesus was by the time they even got there. We are not even sure about that famous star. It is not the facts that don't matter. It is just that they don't matter as much as the stories do. And stories can be true whether they happen or not. You do not have to do archaeology to find out if they are genuine or spend years in the library combing ancient texts. There is another way home. You just listen to the story. You let it come to life inside of you, and then you decide on the basis of your own tears or laughter whether the story is true. 
If you are in any doubt, it is always a good idea to watch other people who have listened to the story. Pay attention to how the story affects them over time. Does it make them more or less human? Does it open them up or shut them down? Does it increase their capacity for joy? Once upon a time, there were three, yes, three very wise men who were all sitting in their own countries, minding their own business when a bright star lodged in the right eye of each of them. It was so bright that none of them could tell whether it was burning in the sky or in their own imaginations. But they were so wise that they knew it did not matter all that much. The point was, something beyond them was calling them, and it was a tug they had been waiting for all of their lives. Each, in his own country, had tried books, had tried magic, had tried astrology and reflexology. One had spent his entire fortune learning how to read and write runes. Another lived on nothing but dried herbs boiled in water. The third could walk on hot coals, but it did nothing for him beyond the great sense of relief he felt at the end. They were all glad for a reason to get out of town, because that was clearly where the star was calling them. Out. Away from everything they knew how to manage and survive. Out from the reputations they had built for themselves, the high expectations, and the disappointing returns. And so... They set out, one by one, each believing that he was the only one with a star in his eye until all ran into one another on the road to Jerusalem. From a distance, each thought the other to be a mirage at first, a twinkling reflection made out of vapor and heat. But as they drew near to one another, they saw the star that they had in common. And it was like a tattoo or a secret handshake that made them brothers before they spoke. They were unanimous in that star that was leading them from Jerusalem, which made perfect sense since they had every reason to believe that they were on their way to meet a king. They had no trouble gaining entrance to the palace. They looked rich after all, and that was enough to get them a royal audience. Only the king they met was something of a disappointment. He was old and fat, and he had terrible breath. His skin was yellow, as if bile had gotten the best of him, and, gore, and guards on either side of him shook as their spears jingled against their shields. Without even conferring with one another, the wise men knew he was not one of them. So they asked him if he knew of any other kings in the general area. He had been picking at his fingernails until then, but the question seemed to get his attention in a big way. He looked right at them for the first time. And when he saw the stars in their eyes, his own eyes grew perfectly round, like the eyes of a snake. Asking the wise men if they would please excuse him for a moment, the king stepped into his chapel to confer with his clergy who whipped out their concordances and told him what he wanted to know. Yes, there was a little something in the book of Micah about a new ruler for Israel, but nothing to get excited about. It had been there a long time. It seemed unlikely, but sure, why not? Send the wise men to Bethlehem to do the reconnaissance, which with and to save a little bit on the national security budget. So that was what the king did. He gargled, combed his hair, and went back to tell the wise men they should go to Bethlehem at once. Which, with his blessing, on the condition that they come back and tell him who his successor was so he could send flowers. His breath smelled like pine saw, and the wise men left feeling queasy, but once they were back out in the night air, they could see the star clearly again and followed it right to the doorway of the one-room house in Bethlehem. It was a perfectly nice place, modest but well built. It was not the kind of place that they had expected to find a king. A dog was sniffing in the woodpile under the eaves in hopes of finding a mouse. Someone was practicing the lute next door, going over the same phrase again and again, 
and again. The smell of dinner was still in the air. Wheat cakes cooked on a griddle greased with sheep's fat. Lentils with lots of garlic and rice. If they had chosen the place themselves, they might never have knocked. But the star had chosen it. So they did. And when the door opened, the couple inside almost died of fright. Not that the wise men noticed. With their arms full of gifts, they crowded into the small space, bumping their turbans on the rafters and snagging their robes on the rough furniture. All they could see was the baby, who was not afraid of them, and whose right eye shone with that same star they had seen before they left home. It was he, then, whoever he was. They did not have a clue, but they knew what to do. They got on their knees and they worshiped him. Then they gave him all the things that they had brought to him, all the wrong things they could see now, things that he had no use for. They should have brought goat's milk, a warm blanket, something shiny to hang above his crib. Only how could they have guessed? The child's parents were gracious they thanked the foreigners for their gifts and held up the baby for them to see. Then, to the wise men's complete alarm, the child's mother picked him up and handed him around so that each of them held that damp, soft, living weight in his arms. Then she took him back and nursed him until they all fell asleep where they sat. In the morning, the wise men could not find their stars anymore. They looked in all the corners and under the chairs. The baby's mother even shook out his blankets, but after an initial panic, the wise men said, never mind, they did not need them anymore. They had found what they were looking for, and they could not lose that. As much as they hated to go, they guessed they had better be on their way. No, they would not be going back through Jerusalem, they said. All three of them had had a dream that said steer clear of Jerusalem if they needed to be told. If anyone in Jerusalem knew anything at all, they would be here instead of there. Besides, none of their old maps worked anymore. They would find a new way home. So the wise men picked up their packs, which were far lighter than before, and then they lined up in front of the baby to thank him for the gifts that he had given them. What in the world are you talking about? The baby's mother laughed and they told her so she could tell him later. For this home and the love here, said the first wise man who could not remember how to say it in runes, for baby flesh, said the second wise man who had no interest in living on herbs anymore. For a really great story, said the third wise man, who thought telling it might do a lot more for him than walking on coals. Then the wise men trooped outside, stretched, kissed the baby goodbye, and went home by another way. Let us pray together the prayers of the people. To the words, come to us, O Lord, respond with and hear our prayer. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who are bowed down. Psalm 145, 14. God of love, hear the cry of those who yearn for love. Fractured families, broken homes, neglected, unwanted, alone. Come to us, O Lord, and hear our prayer. God of justice, hear the cry of those who yearn for justice, persecuted and oppressed, exploited, ill-treated, and broken. Come to us, O Lord, and hear our prayer. God of peace, hear the cry of those who yearn for peace in battle zones and broken states, frightened, fearful, anxious, Come to us, O Lord, and hear our prayer. God of healing, hear the cry of those who yearn for healing, physical and spiritual, hurting, weakened, depressed.
Come to us, O Lord, and hear our prayer. God of mercy, hear the cry of those who yearn for mercy, convicted in need of your grace, contrite, humble, bow down. Come to us, O Lord, and hear our prayer. We pray especially for Shirley, Mike, Kyle, Colette, Jan, Bev, Lisa, Eileen, Larry, Shirley, Jean, Nancy, Mary, Vida, Mary Ann, and Sally. And we pray now for those we name in the quiet of our hearts and in our homes. Come to us, O Lord, and hear our prayer. May you know the hope of God, the love of God, the joy of God, and the peace of God, this day and all days. Amen. At this time in our service, we learn to thank you for the generosity that you have bestowed on our congregation throughout this year, um, but especially also in this season of Christmas, this final uh, uh, fiscal month of the year, but also around the, the season of giving, the season of of shared abundance, the season of welcoming Christ incarnate into our lives and knowing that Jesus in our presence makes a difference. And so we are grateful for the ways that you make a difference week after week through our ministry at Chisago Lake Lutheran Church. Thank you so much for sharing with us, in many cases above and beyond what we could have imagined in this very unusual year. Thank you. Receive the benediction. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaim joy through the angels, who sent the shepherds with good news and led the magi by a star, bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Go in peace and share the gift of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Love incarnate, love divine. Star and angels gave the sign. Bow to babe on bended knee. The Savior of humanity. Unto us a child is born, he shall reign forevermore. No will, no will, come and see what God has done. No will, no will, the story. to suffer, born to suffer.